Hi everybody, it's Stephen Brook and welcome to my YouTube channel on architectural photography and composition. I want to thank all my subscribers and viewers for taking your valuable time to watch these videos. It's really important to me to have your feedback and I really appreciate, especially in this time, uh, to have your support. I suppose you could say, well, in these critical times, what difference does all this make? Well, art and music and the humanities and self-improvement are probably more important now than ever before. And so we will continue to put these videos out and hope that you'll enjoy them. So that said, let me now introduce you to the most powerful retouch tool in your Photoshop arsenal, and that is the mighty Highlight Dodge. The Highlight Dodge is an indispensable tool and it can give life to your photographs like almost nothing else. And also, I want to show you, it can replace lots of lighting cases and lots of time that you take having to light your job. It's on the menu on the side. It's not orange. I put it into orange to to just um, emphasize it. But you can dodge, you can burn, and there's a sponge tool that gets rid of all color. The dodge tool is the one we want to look at. Now I set my tool a very specific way. One is I set the hardness at zero. I don't want to see any hard lines when I make my moves. The second thing is on the exposure, I set it to no more than about 6% so that I can do this very subtly and continue to check my work. And I know you can change the size of the cursor by using the brackets. And then as you use the highlight dodge, you can toggle back and forth in the history state to see how you're doing. And by the way, set your Photoshop preferences performance, set the history to 1000. I don't know, the default is like 20. And if you're going to do a lot of retouching, you want to be able to have a nice long uh, list of everything that you've done. 20 just isn't going to do it. So let me show you a couple of examples where I've used the highlight dodge where it would have been impossible to do this any other way. For example, this is out at the Miami International Airport and I want you to take a look at these um, brushed aluminum mullions back here and also this brushed aluminum base down here. This is as exposed as I want to get it, but I'm really missing the structural details here which are really part of the architecture and so very carefully with the highlight dodge I hit this area and this is what happens. All of a sudden these now come to life and give an extra skeletal uh, quality to the architecture. So let me toggle back and forth a few times so that you can see what a significant improvement that is on the photograph. Here's another example out in the field. This is um, in a landscape shot. It would be nice to highlight these feature plants back here because they're not particularly lit very well and you can't bring lights out. This is a little dull over here. This is a little dull in the background. I would love to have the fronts of these trees lit so that there's an increased sense of depth. So very carefully I go through with a highlight dodge and here's the difference. My water lilies, which are the feature plant, they're lit. My trees in the background, they're lit. And also on the side, this is a little dull. This pops out. Again, this is what I have on a normal shot and this is what I have now with the highlight dodge. Big improvement. Here's another situation. This is the Gucci showroom on, uh, in the design district of Miami. And I was under a time constraint. So even if I, would, if I wanted to have brought in lights, it, would have, it wouldn't have been possible. They wouldn't tolerate that. There was a very short period of time to shoot this. So this is their overall lighting scheme. And they have down lights, wall washers, whatever. But the edges of the clothing, not so sure, not, not so pronounced. The mannequins on the side, their clothes look great. 
but not wonderful. This table in the back is a little flat, and way in the back, when I really would like some extra interest, that's sort of flat back there as well. So with the highlight dodge, this is what we did. Now, all of a sudden, this photograph comes to life. And you can see, again, look at these areas here, look at the table, look in the back, and then look at not just the clothing on the mannequins, but also this little bit of tapestry in the back, and see how much brighter, how much more light there is to the photo. Now, what would it have taken to do this with lighting? It would have taken easily five lights, barn doored, and you have to worry about where the cords are, but it would have taken one light just to do the clothing, and one light back here to hit the tapestry and not overlight the clothing. Another one to come and skim the clothes on the side so that you get almost like a chiaroscuro, light to dark, light to dark, which gives a lot of articulation. Also, now the table is lit up and in the back it's also lit. So I'm going from this to this with instead of hauling all these lights around. Very often in residential situations and also in historic houses, you have a certain amount of lighting and very often it's not enough. So you have an option to bring in a lot of lights, which again, back in the days of film you had to do, but now you can overcome a lot of the deficiencies in the existing lighting. One thing in particular with a break front like this and you have the china in the background, which is usually a feature item in a dining room, and also um, the plates on the table and something we used to have to light independently all the time was this flower back here. So with highlight dodging, all of a sudden this all comes to life. You have to be careful to not overdo it or it can look tacky, but notice the plates. Notice the plates on the table and, and the little bit of accessories and then also a little bit of light on this orchid makes all the difference in the world. Here's another one, and this is a bit more subtle. This is a Frank Lloyd Wright house, and the light comes in here, the light comes in here, but I don't have much of a lighting narrative coming across to take your eye across. What's particularly dull is I'm missing a little bit of light on this radio. This is really flat back here, and there are no ceiling lights to light this up, and they don't let you bring lights into a situation like this. So what I want to do is I want to create with my highlight dodge this narrative of light going across. Hits here and especially hits above the fireplace, hits my chairs over here, the backs of the chairs here, and a little and a few of the accessories. So this is what that looks like. It's subtle, but I want you to look here, 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 and here and see what happens when you put just a little bit of the highlight dodge on there. It makes a big difference. And the more you work with the highlight dodge in these situations, you can see these little areas that, that you can bring up and give some extra life to your picture. The church entrance is really flat. This is bright, this is bright. The problem is there's a little light back in here which is burned out. And so what I need to do is I want to emphasize the stemma, the shield above the door. That's really the most important part of this whole facade. So what I did with my highlight dodge, which you'll see, is I lit, I put a light in here, lit the, the shield, and knowing that this light would be enough to light the shield, I also put a little bit of light on the door. So it looks like that. It's subtle, but when you see it, it, I think it makes all the difference in the world. Very often in residential situations, you don't have museum lighting, you don't have lighting over the, this is a photo in, in here, you don't have lights up in here, and this is sitting a little flat, and it's the feature artwork in this room. So very carefully, a little highlight dodge pops this thing out and now makes it the feature element in the room. Here's another example in this more elaborate uh, dining room. The, the painting back here, quite nice, but it's sort of flat and it too is the main feature in this dining room. So what I've done is very carefully put a little bit of a highlight dodge back there 
to pop that out. Could you do this with a light? You could, but it would be difficult because you would have to barn door it very, very carefully and make sure that you didn't throw shadows that you didn't want on the back wall. It would be nice to have had a light above this to light that, which is typically done in, in, in residences, but they didn't have that there. So with a highlight dodge, we do that. This is very important. This is a north elevation shot in the winter, so there's no light on the north elevation. This is a, for Tommy Bahamas up in the panhandle. This was an, a nice day, it wasn't a great day. So the, the lighting overall is nice, but where it's flat is the most important element, especially for my client, which was the Tommy Bahama sign. So very carefully, now the Tommy Bahama sign is popped out Big difference from that. Now that's the sort of the brightest thing in the image now, and your eye goes right to it. So remember, the highlight dodge tool, the most powerful retouch tool in your Photoshop arsenal. Practice using that. It will save you time, and it'll also save you from having to haul a lot of lights around. Again, I want to thank my subscribers and my viewers for taking their time to watch this channel. I hope if you haven't subscribed, you will. Take a look at my book. I think you'll find it of value. Thanks for visiting and I look forward to seeing you again soon.